Wag yung kayong magkadisgrasyahan tayo niya. Sinasabi ko yung madidisgrasya kayo. At madidisgrasya kayo. Hindi ako urong dito. And I said, I would stake my honor, my life, and even the presidency. Kanyang uh, press corps. Good morning din po sa mga bisita natin from Bataan ng Cagayan de Oro City. Welcome, welcome back, Presidential Spokesperson Harry Roque. Ah, um, maganda umaga po, Pilipinas, and good morning to the ladies and gentlemen of the Malacanang Press Corps. On uh, ompong patuloy po ang pagpakikipag-ugnayan ng mga ahensya ng gobyerno upang tugunan ang pangangailangan ng mga apektadong residente at siguraduhin ang kaligtasan ng lahat. Mamaya po, uh, patungo po si Presidente sa Isabela upang personal na makita ang kalagayan ng ating mga kababayan doon. Nabagaman zero casualty ang probinsya sa pagsalanta ng Bagyong Ompoy ay nakaranas ng malawak uh, na pinsala sa agrikultura at infrastruktura. Sa pinakahuling tala ng National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council, alas 6 ng umaga ngayong araw, merong 218,492 pamilya o 893,844 na katao ang apektado ng bagyong Ompong sa 3,237 na barangay sa Regions 1, 2, 3, Calabarzon, Memoropa, NCR at CAR. Sa bilang na ito, 43,603 pamilya o 162,399 katao ang nananantili sa loob ng 1,780 evacuation centers. Kami po ay nagpapasalamat sa lahat ng inyong tulong. Mahigit na 41 million five hundred ninety nine thousand eight hundred twenty six pesos halaga ang tulong ang napaabot na po ng OCD, DOH, DSWD, mga lokal na pamalhaan at NGO sa mga nasalanta ng bagyo. Kinalulungkot ko pa rin sabihin na tumaas po ang bilang ng mga nasawi as of 12 midnight at naghiwalay lang po kami ni Chief Albayalde ng mga 9 a.m. 63 na po ang uh, patay. Nadagdagan po ito ng tatlo dahil may na-recover na tatlo na namang bangkay sa Itogon, 42 ang injured, 49 ang missing. Bumaba po ang missing dahil didagdag na nga yung missing sa mga namatay. Nakikiramay po kami muli sa mga biktima, pamilya ng mga naging biktima ng uh, Bagyong Ompong. Good news, we welcome the report of McKinsey Global Institute, the business and research arm of McKinsey, citing the country's economy as a very recent accelerator, end quote. MGI noted that the Philippines' rapid economic growth would make the country an outperformer country in the coming years. It also stated that from 2015 to 2030, the Philippines can grow at an annual rate of 5.3% per annum, which is faster than the 4.1% projected annual average growth rate of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. Lastly, MGI mentioned in its report that the growth momentum of the Philippines can be sustained through investments in infrastructure. Further good news, we welcome the Asia-Pacific Sovereign Credit Overview Report released by credit rater Fitch Rating, citing the Philippines' growth outlook as remaining to be favorable. In its report for the third quarter, Fitch noted that the Philippines' economy will sustain its good performance for 2018 on the back of increases in private consumption and investment. Moreover, Fitch Rating said the country's overall investments will increase due to the steady remittances, growing business processing, outsourcing industry, and higher infrastructure spending by the government. Mabuting uh, balita po sa mga taga Tugigaraw. Um, kanina lamang, bandang uh, alas 10 na umaga, binuksan po muli ng DOTR at ng CAAP sa publigo ang Tugigaraw Airport na napansala noong nakaraang linggo ng Bagyong Ompong. Ito ay sinigurong ligtas at maayos para sa mga pasaherong palabas at papunta ng probinsya ng Cagayan. So we expect regular flights to resume between Manila and Tugigaraw. Questions from the Malacanang Press Corps, please? Pre press Corps, tuloy. Question? Ina. Sir, just a clarification on the President's schedule today. Um, yung binigay na schedule pertains to a military or a camp visit. As Joint na po yan. Uh, uh -oh. na so it's a visit to the troops. At the same time, he will also have a situation report. On Regarding the typhoon? Still on Ombong, okay. yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, Joseph Morong. Sir, yesterday, ay last night, no, si Itogon Mayor uh, sa Benguet, 
He's saying that um, there's a little responsibility from Benguet Corporation to restore yung areas that they abandoned. But parang 90s pa lang. But do you think that's a correct proposition? That Benguet should restore, Benguet Corporation should restore what they left? Kasi under the law, dapat, di ba? Well, sa dati. you know, I am a lawyer and I could comment, but I would not comment on that as of yet, no? Because um, while I understand um, the basis for the mayor's claims, I would prefer that the DNR speak on this matter first. No? Um, I can say that under the law, um, whoever allows their property to be used in a manner injurious to others has an obligation to pay damages. No? And of course, under a law on tort, where there is fault or negligence and there is damage to another, there must be indemnification. Um, I would not comment on whether or not there is possible liability. However, we note that the um, facilities occurred in um, an area where the land rights are still owned by Benguet, no? mm. and that the facility, in fact, was still owned by Benguet, albeit allegedly abandoned, no? quote-unquote. No? So I leave it at that. And uh, right now, that is the personal view of uh, the mayor. I would prefer to wait for um, further directions from the DNR and from other agencies of government as of now. Right now, ang importante pa rin po, search and rescue operations dahil napakadami pa pong unaccounted for. Tsaka na po siguro natin pag-usapan yung legal liability. Uh, okay, yun muna. Questions? MPC, other issue? Uh, Joyce? Sir, would you confirm if indeed ES Medialdea and Sap Bongo called um, Congressman Andaya and Speaker Arroyo regarding alleged budget insertions? I cannot confirm because I was with the president yesterday. What I do know was they were in plenary. Uh, CES was in plenary as well as um, Finance Secretary Dominguez was in plenary together with bulk of the members of the cabinet. That was the reason why we only had Sec um, Orogo with us in, um, in um, what do you call this, in um, Benguet because all the rest all the other cabinet members had to attend to the respective budget hearings in Congress. Um, pero sir, uh, anong take na Malacanang dito sa usapin ng alleged more than 50 billion insertions na pinapareview daw ni Speaker Arroyo? Let me put it this way. Malacanang proposed the budget through the NEP and therefore we take responsibility for what appears in the NEP. If it is true that there are items which were not in the NEP, then we do not know where that came from. We leave it to the House to uh, do as it deems proper with these items. Pero ang pinaninindigan po ng palasyo, yung budget ni, ni Presidente na sinumiti sa Kongreso sa pamamagitan ng NEP. But do you think, sir, dapat pong i-review yung budget given these allegations? We respect po the constitutional mandate of, the, uh, of Congress, which has the power of the purse. We have, obli we have actually discharge our constitutional function when we submitted the NEP or the proposed budget to Congress, but it's, it's the call of Congress how it will change the NEP, subject to constitutional limitations, cannot be increased, can be reduced. Uh, going back lang bago makalimutan dun sa issues sa Benguet and related issues. Sir, uh, paulit-ulit kasi yung sinasabi ng Pangulo Duterte na pagtuligsa at pag hindi pagkilala doon sa COA, it's circulars. Why, bakit hindi na lang mag-propose or i-push ng Pangulo sa Kongreso ni i-amend yung National Procurement Act para gawin yung batas na naayon doon sa kung sa tingin niya ay tama at mas mapilis yung procurement procedures, Secretary? Meron na pong uh... Mga gumagawa niyan, pinag-aaralan na po yan, and they will come up with an administration bill on how to further reform mm -hmm. the government procurement process. So we expect that this would, would be certified as urgent by the President, considering he himself is not uh, amenable of the present uh, status of the law. Siyempre po, lahat ng gustong uh, amenda ni Presidente ay isisubitin natin sa Kongreso. Thank you, sir. Okay, questions? Joseph Morong. <laughs> So yung 50B, we're saying that it's not part of the NEP. Hindi ko po alam. Uh, uh, pero according to reports, ang pinag-aawayan nila are amounts which are not included in the NEP. Kasi that's the nature of insertions. No? So we take full responsibility po for everything 
found in the NEP, but we respect the constitutional prerogative of Congress to alter the NEP. But given the decision of the Supreme Court on PDAF, pork barrel, do you think it qualifies as a uh, pork barrel? I am not aware, Paul, because I'm not really sure what the controversy in the House is right now. No? I know as much as you do based on newspaper reports. I was not even able to monitor what was ongoing because the President's um, um, activity happened at the same time that the Rocos happened at the House. No? So, yun lang po ang masasabi ko ngayon. No? We stand by what, was, what appears in the NEP. We appeal that the proposed budget as submitting, submitted should be approved. And we leave it to the House no, to discharge its constitutional mandate to um, exercise its power over the purse. Okay. MPC, more questions? No more? Joseph. Checklist na ng office. Alam mo na yan, sir. Sir, si Senator Tilayanas claimed that may mga parang nagkikase ng bahay niya sa Antipolo. Well... First, it's drama. Now, it appears to be paranoia. I think it's very clear the President has left the matter to the RTC of Makati. And so has the Supreme Court. Okay. Sige, other issue. Sir Peso, um, there's a parang report for Capital Economics, I think. Now, it can reach 58. We'll see po, because uh, the remittances are coming in for December. So, um, we remain confident that the Peso can recover because historically, the peso becomes strongest come December because our OFWs um, remit more than usual in time for the holiday seasons. All right, thank you. Okay, uh, Henry Uli. Hi, sir. Magandang tanghali po. Uh, may binanggit ng Pangulong Duterte kahapon dun sa uh, briefing niya sa Binget na and if I were to try to do my thing, I will close all mining in the Philippines. Pero binanggit niya, but of course, the finance people are those one who would object first. Uh, anong ibig sabihin ho nito? Hostage ba ang Pangulo sa mga economic managers, sa financial managers, when it comes to mining issues? Well, unang-una po, dahil nga po sa separation of powers, meron tayong pulisiya na pinatutupad, yan po ay nasa mining code. Kaya nga po ang sabi ni Presidente, kung ipapatigil ang uh, pagmimina, kinakailangan talagang maripil o maamandahan yung mining code. So that's the first limitation po. Hindi po hostage ang Presidente kung hindi limited by the separation of powers. Pangalawa po, yung uh, usaping mining, at ito po'y nakita ko rin kahapon dahil matapos natin mag-press briefing, ang tanong kaagad, anong magiging hanap buhay nung mawawalan ng, ng trabaho? No? It's a delicate balance. We need to strike a delicate balance between the need to protect human lives, the environment, and the need to provide um, the right to livelihood dun sa mawawala ng trabaho sa industriya. No? So, tinanggap naman po ng paghamon ng uh, administrasyon na uh, itong nangyari sa Itogon. Mabuti na lang po, meron tayong model. And that model was Burakay. So, alam na po ng mga ahensya ng gobyerno ang gagawin. It's very similar to um, what happened to Burakay. Ang uh, pagkakaiba lang po, hindi natin alam kung hanggang kailan mananatiling walang pagmimina dyan sa, sa CAR dahil lang sabi po ni um, uh, DNR Secretary ay uh, sa lalong mabilis sa panahon, pag-aaralan nila yung proposal para sa minahan ng bayan. So habang wala pong minahan ng bayan, wala munang small-scale mining dyan sa CAR. No? So, uh, so alam po ng gobyerno ang gagawin niya, yung pagbibigay ng temporary assistance, yung pagbibigay ng alternative livelihood, ang siguro dapat na lang siguruduhin natin is anong period ang kinakailangan ng DNR para maaktuhan yung application for minahan ng bayan. Pero kung may ganitong uh, statement ng Pangulo, ano yung pinakamagagawa niya para matigil na yung pananalasa nitong mga mining na ito sa ating kapaligiran, Secretary? Ginawa na po niya ang ginawa sa CAR. Um, si Secretary Simatu po acted at, as his uh, political agent when um, Secretary Simatu decided to suspend all small-scale mining in the car, not just in Itogon. So yan po ang kapangyarihan ng Ejecutivo. Uh, lastly po, ano po ang update doon sa 23 minahan na uh, noon ay iminungkahi ni uh, dating Secretary Gino Lopez ng DNR na ipasara. Ano pong estado na nito, Secretary? If uh, you have any information, please. Hindi ko po alam kasi it's specific to the 23, no? So I do not know. I will inquire from the DNR. Pero ang sinasabi po ni Presidente, kung yan ay open pit mining, bilang na po ang araw niyan.
Pero may mga naipasara ng minahan ang gobyernong ito. Madami na po. Well, ngayon po sa buong car, wala nang mining na small scale. Meron naman po large scale dyan, pero iilan lang po yung mga kumpanya. No? Yung nandun po sa Itogon, technically hindi po operating yon. So, uh, pero yung kanyang mining claim, e eh, dun po nag uh, uh, operate yung mga small miners. Kaya nga po, ulitin ko kahapon, we distinguish between the mining claim of um, the, the mining company and the minahan ng bayan. Hiwalay po yan. Okay? Ang problema nga lang, merong small time, small scale mining na nangyayari doon sa mining claim. And the issue is, authorized ba ito o hindi? Officially, the company has said, hindi authorized, we don't know. No? Pero pagdating sa minahan ng bayan, hiwalay po yung area doon sa merong uh, mining claim. Inamin po at uh, may information na yung um, as asawa ng mayor ng Itogon daw po ay namimili ng ginto. Nakarating po ba ito sa Malacanang? Mm, wala po akong informasyon na ganyan pero yan po ay hanap buhay doon talaga sa Itogon. Wala na may ibang hanap buhay doon kundi pag, pag uh, mimina ng ginto. Pero kung ang binibili po bang ginto ng uh, uh, asawa ng mayor ay galing po doon sa mga uh, nagmimina ng illegal illegal din po ba ito, may, uh, Secretary? Well, uh, ang punto po is lahat po ng mga nakukuhang ginto ay pag-aari ng gobyerno. Kaya nga po, um, may presensya po sa Cordillera ang Central Bank dahil kinakailangan naman na uh, mapunta sa gobyerno yung uh, ginto na yan. No? At kaya nga po, nagkaroon ng mga 500 miners na binigyan ng uh, permit to operate as small scale miners ng uh, DNR Dahil kinakailangan naman na mainganyo natin yung mga nagmimina ron na ibalik sa gobyerno yung nasa lupa na pag-aari ng taong bayan. No? So yun po ang pagkakaalam ko. Alright, salamat po. Raymond Tenasa. Sir, just to, to be fair and sympathize sa mga biktimang small-scale miners, kasi yung minimina naman nila kasi, yun yung mga hinukay, sinira ng mga large-scale miners na nakabase sa Metro Manila. At nung iniwan, nag-second crop, para nag-second cropping sila, sila ngayon yung para mga paunti-unti na e, it, ito, iniwan at sinira ng mga large-scale miners. Hindi ba mas karapat dapat na habuli ng gobyerno yung mga large-scale miners na ito na hindi nagawang ayusin at i-maintain at ibalik, i-preserve yung sinira at inukay nila sa area na yun? At this point po, I can only restate the law. Hindi po ako magkukonclude dahil meron mga ahensya ng gobyerno na yan ang trabaho. Meron din po tayong prinsipyo na polluters pay principle. No? Kung sino yung maninira na kalikasan, dapat ibalik at silang dapat magbayad sa uh, uh, rehabilitation effort. No? So, that's the law. Yung law on, on, on torts and damages, kung meron kang uh, kapabayaan or um, meron kang ginawang bagay na nagkas ng damage, kailangan mong bayaran ng danyos at saka yung polluters pay principle. Pero hayaan muna natin yung mga ang gobyerno ang gawin ng trabaho nila. Ulitin ko po, ngayon po, umaasa pa tayo makarecover ng mga survivors. Hindi yes. po tayo nagigive up po. Yes, pero hindi ba klarong ebidensya ng kanilang pagpabaya yung after almost a decade na na iniwan nila yun at ganyan pa rin yung sitwasyon at humantong nga sa trahedyang ito? Uh, tignan po natin kung anong sasabihin ng uh, appropriate agency but ang personal opinion ko, ang sabi po ni Mayor, nandun pa rin ang security guard ng Minahan yung mining company at uh, sa kanila pa rin yung lugar no and they still own the surface soil at least yun ang sabi ni mayor pero ngayon po focus muna na tayo sa search and retrieval and rescue efforts okay si Christine Avendano Sir, will uh, the executive now immediately push for the repeal of the mining act sir the president has insinuated already yesterday so but um, of course it's, uh, as I said, a delicate balance between the economics of mining and the uh, police power of the state no? to protect the lives and the environment of the state. No? So um, I think there was already a clear insinuation, um, but we will see how it goes. Okay, sir, just on the peso dollar, yung uh, 58 ba na peso, uh, it was this uh, among the projections of the economic team? I'm not aware po. But whatever the projection is, we're, we're confident that the peso will rally because this is now the season where our OFWs remit usual, um, more than usual amounts to their loved ones in the Philippines. The remittances is also the assessment of the, class, of the economic cluster. I think historically, you know, yes, the confidence is there come the bear months. 
So it wasn't raised yung noon yung because nga the peso is rising. Um, let's just say that even the weakening of the peso was not projected, but there are factors at work amongst which is the need for capital uh, imports no, uh, because of the build, build, build. Thank you, sir. Okay. Maricel? Oh, sige. Good morning, sir. Just a quick reaction lang po. Um, a grupong karapatan said that Sultan Hamidula Atar of Marawi will testify against the Duterte administration before the International People's Tribunal from September 18 to 19. This is with regards to human rights violations. Your comment on this, sir? Nothing, because that's not an official proceeding. That's a propaganda proceedings by the left. So this is not a cause of concern on the part no, of No, I don't even know who that sultan is. Because I know there is a, a consolidated, you know, parang there's one sultan that they selected among themselves. I was um, ninong to a royal wedding recently, and I think I met all the, the royal families, so to speak, although the constitution prohibits, really, the grant of uh, nobility. No? But um, so I don't know who he is, and um, that's... Uh, that's a sham proceeding because it's not an official proceeding. It's for propaganda purposes. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, sir, sir, question from P. Aranyada Prapler. If PRD remarks against COA were in light of cutting uh, red tape, why doesn't he work with government procurement policy board under his office and COA to adjust rules for calamity situations? Why the need to threaten COA? I think he missed the point. Uh, the context of the question was, nagbibigay ng cash advances ang gobyerno para sa tulong sa mga biktima ng sakuna. We na-warningan sila ng, uh, ng COA na wag ipagpatuloy ang pagbibigay ng mga cash advances na yan. So it has nothing to do with procurement. Okay. Last question na ba tayo? Uh, Joseph? Ina. Hi, sir. Sir, is the palace anticipating the inflation rate to rise further because of the effects of Ompong on uh, agricultural products? We can't deny that 14 billion was um, a very high cost to agriculture. However, we now have um, policy shift. We have um, allowed the entry of import of food products, which we hope will bring down the cost of good. It simply means that, for instance, in corn, because ang sabi ni uh, Secretary uh, Pinyol, eh, talagang devastated ang corn production natin, we may have to import corn as well. No? So um, we're hoping that inflation will not worsen because of um, institutional steps already taken by the government no, to help uh, rein in inflation. So you don't see the effects of Ompong offsetting these government efforts which we um, took before the typhoon hit? Well, hopefully not, no? Um, the policy of, for instance, tarification no, will have a wide-scale effect on the price of rice, which I read in one of the press briefings has, carries a very heavy weight on, the, on inflation. No? Um, we're also hoping that the importation of other food products, no, um, open importation of these food products, will also offset no, whatever shortage may result or whatever lower supply may result as a result of Ompong. Um, in other words, we hope to compensate the loss because of Ompong through importation. Will the import volumes be increased? Maliban dun sa pagdagdag, sir, ng now sa corn, sabi mo? Mm -mm. For well, other products, yung sinabi before na i-import? Kapag na mag-tarification tayo, wala nang quantitative restrictions yan eh. Okay. So free market na nga eh, to import in exchange for payment of tariffs, which we will use uh, to provide assistance to our farmers. Okay. Thank you. Last question, Joyce Malancho. Sir, is the president not bothered by the new viral video of Asik Mokauson, the one that appears to be making fun of mute individuals? Well, as I stated yesterday, we leave that to Secretary Martin Andanar. He is the superior of Asik Moka. As far as the president is concerned, his tolerance for freedom of expression, as you know, is very high. But we leave the matter to Secretary Martin Andanar. But uh, as of now, so do you see any liability ni Asik Moka? Wala bang nalabag sa Magna Carta for persons with disabilities? We leave it to Secretary Martin Antanar. Joseph. Sir, elaboration lang dun sa Benguet, no, sa mining. Um, you mentioned Boracay, no? Eh, number one, indefinite, no? Yung suspension for small-scale mining. Sinabi ko po yan. Yes. So yun yung pagkakaiba. 
Pero yung immediate na dapat gawin, sanay na yung gobyerno. Kasi alam natin mawawala ng trabaho yung uh, at least 10,000. No? Halos kapareho nga yung numero dyan sa Boracay at saka sa, sa um, Itogon, no? uh, sa Cordillera, no? yung mga small-scale miners. No? So, I think for the next six months, okay tayo. And we're hoping that um, the decision of the DNR on the Minahan ng Bayan will be more or less issued within six months too. No? Because I experience with Buraka is six months. Yeah. Okay, so can we say that this is akin to parang rehabilitating din also? Correct. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's akin to rehabilitating uh, the mined out areas of the Cordilleras and it will be an attempt to actually um, allow the environment to recover. No? Because this is actually a result of environmental degradation. I think everyone agrees that while the rain was um, too much, there's also man-made um, contributions to this um, disaster. No? All right, so the SWD will have to step in, yung mga training din, yung mga DTI. Parang yung format sa... Sanay na, sanay na po sila. Kaya kahapon, it was like clockwork, no? because people knew already what to do. Um, I guess we owe it to Boracay that people now, the agencies of government know exactly what to do. The SWD, DOLE, DA, DTI. So, alam na alam po nila, like clockwork ko nang dapat gawin. So, sir, can we say, no, just for clarification purposes, that uh, mind that heiress will undergo a six-month rehabilitation also? Well, I can't commit Secretary um, Simatu. I don't know how long it will take him to review the application for Minahan ng Bayan. Clearly, with all small-scale mining suspended in the Cordillera, the only way it can resume is through the Minahan ng Bayan. Mm -hmm. So, and I don't know how long it will take him to authorize Minahan ng Bayan. All right. But you mentioned six months. So, the, the affected miners will get some compensation from the government. Ang sinasabi ko lang, sanay na tayo kung anong gagawin natin dahil sa Boracay, which lasted for six months. No? So, we'll see um, if DNR can issue a decision within six months. Kung hindi po, I'm sure kaya pa rin ng gobyerno yan, no? But we cannot commit na from this time on na uh, uh, to revoke yung mga licenses that they are they can expect some form of assistance from the government. Wala pang ganun ka formal. No, right now we're committed to assist everyone, no? Na na wala ng trabaho. In fact, okay. they are at play already, no? Okay. They are discharging their obligations, no? Um, all they need are the names, and automatically they will be given 15 months <coughs> of um, um, uh, ano ba yon yung um, yung cash for work, no? Ang sabi lang ng DSWD, ang gusto niya na gagawin ng mga uh, babayaran ng cash for work, magtatanim ng uh, gulay o kaya magtatanim ng mga puno, no? Na nakaka-absorb ng tubig, no? So, yun yung preference. And it was agreed upon yesterday, no? Because uh, while waiting for the President, Secretary Orogo, Secretary Pinyol agreed, I will give you the cash for work, you will give us the seedlings, um, para mag-encourage ng uh, um, vegetable farming and tree planting dun sa area. Sir, 15 months? 1.5 1. months. No, days muna yan. Immediate ah, kasi. The okay. first is 15 days. 15 days cash per work. Okay. Tapos papasok naman, after the 15 days, yung tupad. Tupad okay. is up to 6 months. O, oh, parang Boracay nga siya. Oh, Sir, see? okay. Alam na nila, framework na yan ng, ano, ng Boracay. There's a bad duit, tupad, and then the other agencies will take over. Clarification, sir. The president wants a repeal of the Mining Act. He has insinuated already that it's high time for everyone to consider doing away with mining. Okay, MPC, no more questions? Okay, thank you, presidential spokesperson. Thank Ari you. Lopez. See you on Thursday. Okay, back to our main studio sa Radio Pilipinas and People's Television Network. Mm -hmm.